Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The energy regulator begins hearings next week into ESCOM's revenue application for the 2024 and 2025 financial years. Terence Greenman joins me to discuss the application. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this application? Well, it's quite convoluted actually. We're in this traditional tariff tango, which we're used to, you know, with public hearings and public comment. But it goes back uh, to an application for MYPD5, the sort of fifth uh, round of this multi-year price determination. And ESCOM put in a three-year application in 2021. And there was initially uh, a toing and froing because uh, NERSA wanted to adjudicate it under a new methodology which didn't exist. ESCOM went to court and the court said you must at least do the first year, which is the current year that we're in, the financial year 2023 for ESCOM. So that was adjudicated last year. Eskom asked for 20, over 20 percent and received less than 10 percent, around 9.6 percent from that. So we're into the second two years of that tariff cycle. And again, there was a toing and froing and a court process where Eskom said, you know, we still don't have a new methodology. We need to at least have some certainty about adjudicating the second two years. And uh, the court agreed and said, that at least 2024 financial year has to be adjudicated under the existing MYPD methodology because there is no new methodology. NERSA is still consulting on it. And NERSA then put out the public consultation uh, documents for that. Uh, so we're into that process now. And they put it out for both the 2024 financial year as well as the 2025 financial year. And uh, basically that's where we're in, uh, we're in this phase now where uh, we're going to now be adjudicating at least the first year, but it looks like both years because uh, th th that is what the NERSA consultation paper covers. So ESKIM is looking for a certain increase for 2024 and as a lower increase for 2025. What is ESKIM asking for this time? Well, it's uh, a massive 32% tariff hike for 2024 financial year, followed by another 9% or so hike for 2025. And uh, so th it's really done with in terms of the, the MIPD methodology and it's put together uh, in terms of the rules of that. And I don't think there's much disputing that. It's now about whether uh, NERSA agrees and society agrees with uh, ESKIM. It's compiled at uh, sort of an allowable revenue bottom up and uh, one of the big elements, over 10% of that 32%, relates to the way uh, NERSA calculated ESKIM's uh, um, regulatory asset base in 2021. ESKIM has taken that on legal review because uh, the asset base value that ESKIM used was 1.2 trillion rand and NERSA used 550 billion rand, so it's a massive gap. And actually that 550 billion rand was below the asset base that, uh, that NERSA used for the previous uh, tariff determination. So that legal review is underway and it may or may not be uh, determined before uh, uh, NERSA makes a final decision, which they've set down for the 7th of November. The court has told it it has to be done by the by Christmas Eve, the, tw the 24th of December, but they're trying to do it a bit sooner. Now, there's already a couple of other legal uh, determinations that, that are affecting this tariff application, including a 15 billion rand amount that has to be included after Eskom won a court case related to the 69 billion equity injection announced many years back, which uh, was found by the courts to have been illegally deducted from the allowable revenue by NERSA. And there's since been a settlement of that. The first 10 billion was already baked in previously. Now 15 billion for the next few years, plus in, in the outer year, 2027 year, 14 billion has to be included right from the start in Eskom's uh, allowable revenue to recover that the, the, the residual 59 billion rand. Plus there's been a regulatory clearing account determination, uh, which is outstanding 3.4 billion. And Eskom for this first financial year is looking for half of that. So that's already included in the amounts, but those make up less than 2% of that overall 32% increase that uh, is being sought. 
How does the deteriorating performance of ESCOM's coal fleet factor into the application? Yes, our ESCOM has put up an, an addendum this week to the original application. You must remember this original application was made in June 2021 under the expectation, as I said earlier, that the full three years would be adjudicated. Only one year has been adjudicated. And at that point, ESCOM was assuming an energy availability factor from its fleet generally, but uh, the coal fleet is the major part of that, of 72%. In this latest addendum, it's been reduced to 59%. And we know that Eskom's actually running at levels worse than that while we're load shedding at the moment. So it's a whole different uh, assumption. Um, it doesn't mean that the energy coming from the coal fleet is going to be massively different because, again, Eskom is assuming a very high energy utilization factor over the period. So while it's not always available, when it's available, they're going to be running these coal power stations really, really hard higher than the global average, way above the global average. But there is a slight reduction in expected coal use during this next financial year. And that then comes through in a much higher diesel costs assumed. Um, so while the allowable revenue envelope remains as 351 billion, which is massive, um, and it's a big jump up from, uh, from the less than 300 billion approved under the last determination, um, it, it includes a much bigger portion of diesel costs. And those diesel costs, Eskimo is assuming for next year to be f 16 uh, billion rand. So we know they, they're less around 8 billion currently. And we know that Eskimo's already burned through halfway, only halfway through their current financial year, they've already burned through 7.7 um, uh, billion of that. So they've got very little remaining. So they're saying this is a more realistic figure both in terms of the cost of diesel, because the cost of diesel is much higher, and we can see it as motorists, we can see that the invasion of Russia into Ukraine, diesel costs surged, and as the prices have come down, we've seen the diesel prices staying higher. So they're assuming a much higher base price for diesel for the next year, but then again, also some higher volumes coming through those OCGT plants to cater for not just the poor performance of the coal fleet, but also the fact that Kuburg's only operating half the time, when it's operating, because we've also seen major trips. So it's a quite a big change in terms of what they're asking for on the diesel side. What is the likely outcome of this application? Well, as we know, as I said, it's a tariff tango and we're going to have massive pushback from society. We know how difficult things are in the economy at the moment. We know that uh, j uh, the jobless crisis is, has really got amplified during the COVID period and is not going to, uh, has not been abating at the pace that we needed to abate. We know that many businesses are still struggling to recover. We, we can see the headwinds coming from the global environment in terms of inflation, in terms of, uh, you know, this feeling that interest rates are going to be much higher, so potential recession in certain large countries. So there's going to be an appeal, I think, to, Esco, uh, to NERSA not to allow a, a massive 32% increase. And we know traditionally, NERSA never gives Eskom what they want, but they, I think it's going to be very much an appealing outside of the framework, because I think uh, the framework, Eskom, you know, it's a bit like uh, the, the operation is successful, but the patient is dead. The, the, the framework that Eskom is using, I, I don't know if you can easily fault the figures. They've taken out, for instance, the carbon tax amount has been taken out because we know we've extended the phase one of the, uh, the carbon tax. So there's no carbon tax from the electricity system in the next few years. So that's lowered at about 10 billion for the next two years. They've taken out any um, uh, arrear debt that was being cross subsidized from those of us who are paying for electricity for those who are not paying. So they've adjusted it in terms of the formula very well, but it's in a context. And the context I think is what's going to be the focus of attention in the next week, where people are going to say, look at the context, and the context is one where we've got this, we, we need a stable electricity supply, yes, and we need Eskom to get a return, but we, we, one, they're not delivering that, and, and two, uh, you know, we can't afford a 32% hike at this time in the, in the economy's uh, very difficult space as it's trying to recover and is really limping along, really not really recovering strongly. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week.
thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.